me clearly, America is not a racist country. We're not a racist country, Brian. We've never been a racist country. Ladies and gentlemen, in the past, I have spoken about the prison system and prison labor and all of the corporations out here that take advantage and use the prisons as slave labor. You know, many of them don't get paid at all or they get paid pennies per hour to do a bunch of slave work. Whenever somebody tells you slavery has been over for hundreds of years, that person is lying to you. In fact, you should not talk to that person at all. The moment our forefathers stepped off the plantation, that's when they start labeling our people as criminal. You got to look at a timeline. It's a timeline to everything these folks say. So once you became criminal and also prisons went up all over the country right after slavery was over. So you know what the intent was. The intent was to keep us in some form of captivity. And they have accomplished that all the way up until now. So when they say you are not entitled to reparations because you weren't a slave, that's a damn lie. There are people in your prisons that have been slaves for decades. So what you're saying is a straight up lie. Not to mention all of the people that are in there that are innocent and never committed a crime and they've been in there doing this manual labor the whole time. Yeah, that's cause for reparations. It most certainly is. If you had an intent on permanently getting rid of slavery, then it would never have been in your constitution. And the fact that it's still there says what your intent was all along. So ladies and gentlemen, Let's get to it and, and always pay attention to the faces that are being exonerated. It is overwhelmingly black men. Now, over the years, there's been a few black women in the mix, but overwhelmingly black men, because that's who they want to see in prison doing all of this backbreaking work. Let's get into the story that recently came out. Prisoners in the U.S. are part of a hidden workforce linked to hundreds of popular food brands. Every industry in this country is linked to the prison system in some way, shape, or form. And America has not lived one day without slavery. Not one day. If you took this manual backbreaking slave work out of the prisons, America would collapse. You hear me? America would collapse the moment this work ended in the prison system. A hidden path to America's dinner table begins here. At an unlikely source, a former Southern slave plantation. No, you should take the word former out of that sentence. It is still a slave plantation that is now the country's largest maximum security prison. Unmarked trucks packed with prison raised cattle roll out of the Louisiana State Penitentiary where men are sentenced to hard labor and forced to work. And you know, if they refuse to do this, this slavery work, they get punished, severely punished, beaten just like a slave, because guess what? They are slaves. For pennies an hour or sometimes nothing at all, after rumbling down the country road 
to an auction house. The cows are bought by the local ranchers and then followed the Associated Press another 600 miles to a Texas slaughterhouse that feeds into the supply chains of giants like McDonald's, Walmart, and Cargill. So that should not be shocked. And it's linked to some of the world's largest food companies and popular brands to job performed by U.S. prisoners, a.k.a. slaves, nationwide, according to a sweeping two-year AP investigation into prison labor that tied hundreds of millions of dollars worth of agricultural products to goods sold to the open market. Now, you know, there are some people out here, oh, if people know, you know, they would boycott. No, they wouldn't. These people never boycotted slavery a day in their life, and they ne- you can rest assured they never will. They are among America's most vulnerable laborers. If they refuse to work, some can jeopardize their chances of parole or face punishment like being sent to solitary confinement, just like a slave was punished. They're being punished just like chattel slaves were punished. And in many cases, they are beaten if they refuse to work, just like chattel slavery. They are also often excluded from protections guaranteed to all or other full-time workers, even when they are seriously injured or killed on the job. Doesn't that still sound like a slave? The goods these inmates produce wind up in supply chains of a different array of products from American Kitchens to Frosted Flake Cereal, Ballpark Franks, to Gold Medal Flour, Coca-Cola, and it's not just Coca-Cola, Pepsi's in the mix too, okay? And Rice Land Rice. They are on the shelves of virtually every supermarket in the country, including Kroger, Target, Aldi, and Whole Foods. And you know how high the prices are at Whole Foods, right? And some goods are exported, including to countries that have had products blocked from entering the U.S. for using forced or prison labor. How hypocritical is that? You're doing the same thing here in the country. But see, these are the same people that will try to point at China and and other countries for human rights violations. And these folks here in America commit human rights violations on a regular basis. They've been committing human rights violations for hundreds of years. But they want to point to other nations America needs to shut the hell up. Many of the countries buying directly from prisons are violating their own policies against the use of such labor. America's not against slavery. America's not against using slave labor, okay? Because they're doing it to this very day. You can't be against something and you're still carrying it out. But it's completely legal, dating back largely to the need for labor to help rebuild the South shattered economy after the Civil War. Oh, really? What happened to the supervisors? I thought the supervisors down there were so important. How come they didn't get the South rebuilt? 
enshrined in the Constitution by the 13th Amendment. Slavery and involuntary servitude are banned except for punishment for a crime. See, this is why they keep their people, them folks keep their people out of prison. And they gladly put you in there, even, you know, people in the black community, even if no crime was committed, because they know it's slavery. That's why they do that. They could commit crimes all day long and get the most minuscule sentence. You know why? You know why, y'all? Because they know prison is slavery. That's why that. Why do you think they're screaming for Derek Chauvin to get out and the McMichaels and people that really committed crimes because they know what prison is. That's why they're talking like that. They know what it is. They know it's slavery. That clause is currently being challenged on a federal level and efforts to remove similar language from state constitutions are expected to reach the ballot in about a dozen states this year. Y'all, it was already on ballots. Remember, Louisiana went against it. They want to keep their, their slave labor down there. Y'all remember that, right? I did a video on it. Some prisoners work on the same plantation soil that slaves harvested. They harvest cotton, tobacco, and sugar cane for more than 150 years and still doing it. Still doing those things. Still doing it. With some present day images looking eerily similar to the past because it is the past. You're seeing the past in real time. And you're seeing their attitudes of the past in real time too. In Louisiana, which is one of the country's highest incarceration rates. Yes. Yeah. And Louisiana was another one of those locations that had a lot of slaves and at one point in time the slaves outnumbered the slave owners you know this happened in several of those southern states ladies and gentlemen it did so <clears throat> men working on the farm line is what they call it still stoop over crops stretching far into the distance. So I want y'all to think about it. See how they're pouring all these south of the border people in? So you got primarily black men that are in slavery behind bars, and you got these other people coming south of the border, and they're going to primarily be doing all of the back breaking slave work while these people sit on their butts getting fat. Okay. Willie Ingram picked everything from cotton to okra during his 51 years in the state penitentiary known as Angola. During his time in the fields, he was overseen by armed guards on horseback. Now, what's the difference between that and slavery? Nothing. Same thing happened during slavery. Recalled seeing men working with little to no water passing out in triple digit heat. Some days, he said, workers would throw their tools in the air to protest despite knowing the potential consequences. They'd come, maybe four in a truck, shields over their face, billy clubs, and they beat you right there in the field. They beat you, handcuff you, beat you again, said Ingram, who received a life sentence after pleading guilty to a crime that he never committed. Imagine that a black man in jail for a crime he never committed. It seems like they got black men in jail like that by the thousands.
because I, I know they do. They absolutely do. So he was told he would serve 10 and a half years and avoid possible death penalty, but it wasn't until 2021 when a sympathetic judge finally released him at the age of 73. Wow. The number of people behind bars in the United States started to soar in the 1970s, just as Ingram entered the system, disproportionately hitting black people. You know, they were always putting that people of color, that is not people of color. You're putting exclusively black people, the same people that were in chattel slavery, disproportionately in prison. And you can talk all that, you commit all the crimes. No, see, this is why we can go back in the history and see where when our forefathers left the slave field, you labeled them immediately as criminal. So we know what your intent was even back then. The same intent that you're using to mass incarcerate. Now, with about 2 million people locked up in U.S. prison labor from all sectors have morphed into a multi-billion dollar empire. That's why they got it this way, y'all. Remember, even chattel slavery was multi-billion dollars down there in the southern part primarily, but it was all over. It was in other northern states too. And... That's why they fought the Civil War, because they didn't want to end it. They were making a lot of money sitting on their flat asses as the slaves were working hard in the fields. So this is why they don't want to let go. You'll hear every now and then, oh, they're going to change the Constitution. They never do. Oh, we're going to make um, changes and we're going to start voting on this uh, the prison labor. And it, it never goes nowhere, y'all. And, and then when you look at the states where it was voted on to get rid of it, oh, it, it'll be gone by 2049. You know, that's the stuff they do. Oh, yeah, they, they voted on it. It passed, uh, but it won't go into effect until 2030. That's the kind of stuff they do. Okay, so extending far beyond the class images of prisoners stamping license plates, working on road crews and battling wildfires. They're still battling wildfires, by the way. They still do it. Whenever there are, you know, these big out of control fires, they always get the inmates and pay them like a dollar a day to be out there putting out wildfires. They still do this stuff. They still do all of it. So, though almost every state has some kind of farming program, agriculture represents only a small fraction of the overall prison workforce. Still, an analysis of data amazed by the AP from correctional facilities nationwide traced $200 million worth of sales of farm goods and livestock to businesses over the past six years. A consecutive figure that does not include tens of millions more in sales to state and government entities. Yeah, you're always excluding numbers. That's another big thing these people do. So um, much of the data provided was incomplete. That, that shouldn't be shocking. That's the one thing about these folks that I do know working around them. They love playing with numbers. And if they can reduce the numbers or try to downplay the numbers, that's exactly what they do all the time. They are notorious for that. Though it was clear that the biggest revenues came from sprawling operations in the South and leasing out prisoners to companies, the prison leasing program is still going on today, y'all. It's still going on today. It's still happening. 
reparations, the talk of reparations is never going anywhere. We don't care how mad you get. It's never going anywhere. It's never going anywhere. Correction officials and other proponents note that not all work is forced and that prison jobs save taxpayer money. So you're still trying to justify it just like you did chattel slavery. You justified that too and still do. Still do. That's why some of the fat Michelin man looking ones will be in your face talking about they wish they had a slave sitting there looking like you all you do is eat for a living let's go on for example in some cases food produced and served in prison kitchens and donated to those in need outside they also say workers are learning skills that can be used when they're released that is bs most of these people that learn these skills, when they get out, they can't even get those jobs. And they will tell those inmates that been in there will tell you that themselves. If they learn how to be a firefighter in prison, when they get out and they go to a fire department, they won't hire them. So that is a load of BS. It's just like the stuff they're on down in Florida. Oh, well, slavery wasn't all bad. The slaves learned the skill. It's the, they're saying the same thing in this article. They're just saying it in a different way. And they can't get those jobs. They can't. Some of them put, made products for Walmart and will go and apply for those jobs and can't get those jobs. So that is a straight up lie. That is a lie. So, you know, this is just them trying to put down feel good stuff so they don't have to feel so bad about what they're actually doing to people. That's all that crap is. Oh, he's learning a skill. Oh, look at you learning a skill. The fuck out of here. And given a sense of purpose which could help ward off repeated offenses. No, it doesn't ward that off. If that's the case, why don't y'all really legitimately put the people among your group in jail that really should be there? There's a lot of people walking around on the outside and they really should be on the inside. Lots of them. So in some places, it allows prisoners to also shave off time of their sentences. And the jobs provide a way to repay a debt to society. Yeah, but, you know, how are you supposed to pay a debt to society? And in some cases, you were never supposed to be in there in the first place. So how is a person that never committed a crime and been in there for decades, how are, how are they were supposed to pay a debt to society? See, all of this stuff that y'all have been saying all this time don't fly. It really don't. And it don't justify a lot of the things that have been done. Yeah, you got away with saying it, but if somebody really had a trained ear, they would know you're full of crap. They would know. So also the prison labor, ladies and gentlemen, is a workforce with no real protections. They have no protections out there. They're not safe and they don't care about them being safe. Just like there were no protections, still really no protections for us now. And the few that we got, if they could wring that away from you, they would. So in addition to tapping a cheap, reliable workforce, companies sometimes get tax credits 
and other financial incentives. That's why prison labor is never going anywhere because they're getting too many perks from it. Slavery, anyone? Incarcerated workers also typically aren't covered by most basic protections, including workers' compensation and federal safety standards. In many cases, they cannot file official complaints about poor working conditions. These prisoners often work in industries with severe labor shortages, doing some of the country's dirtiest and most dangerous jobs. The AP sifted through thousands of pages of documents and spoke to more than 80 current and formerly incarcerated people, including men and women convicted of crimes that range from murder to shoplifting, writing bad checks, thefts, and other illegal acts. And you can best believe the marijuana crowd that they keep putting in there are also out there doing this backbreaking labor. And illegal acts linked to drug use. Some were given long sentences for non-violent offenses. Marijuana, anyone? Non-violent. They were given long sentences for non-violent offenses. Just like we've been saying all along. You know, some of them have the audacity to get on videos talking about that don't happen. It's just people that commit the most violent crimes that got the long sentences. That is a damn lie. That is a damn lie. Okay, so good. I'm glad the AP has said this. We have been saying it in the black community all along. We know what we're talking about. Wow. Because, you know, because you are a bunch of evil devils. That's why you do that to people that have committed nonviolent crimes. Others were released after proving their innocence. Yeah, but you know how long it can take for a person to prove their innocence here in America? It, that can take a long, long time, y'all. A very long time. Reporters found people who were hurt, maimed, and also interviewed women who were S harassed and assaulted. Sometimes their civilian supervisors or other correctional officers overseeing them would be doing these things. Of course, remember, you are at a slave status. So if those things happen, you can't even go and complain about it. That's why these civilians and COs are taking advantage of the situation. Of course they are. Wow. I mean, this is really painful to even go through this. Reporters even spoke to family members of prisoners who were killed. So one of them was Frank Dwayne Ellington, who was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole. Wow. He stole a man's wallet at gunpoint. And so he was put in for life without the possibility of parole. Just think about that. Derek Chauvin murdered George Floyd and he got 22 and a half years. This man took a wallet but didn't kill the person, and he got life. And, and that right there should tell you there is something seriously wrong in the sentencing in America. But we also know that, too. And we know why there's something wrong in sentences in America.
So he was cleaning a machine. <coughs> excuse me. He was cleaning a machine near a chicken kill line in one of the big, for one of the biggest poultry companies in uh, the U.S. Koch Foods when he was um, caught, his arm got caught and he got sucked into this machine, which crushed his skull and instantly killed him. So, you know, they don't care about the, the slaves getting killed on the job. We know that. So, you know, technically he was an employee, but, you know, they don't want to do anything for you. If they can get away with doing nothing, that's exactly what they would do. So the family was barred from fire, uh, filing a wrongful death um, claim because the company paid his funeral expenses. The case was settled eventually for an undisclosed term. And you know, these devils also got a life insurance policy on every inmate in this country. When really the family should be getting that money and not the states and governments. They shouldn't be getting that money. The family should. But that's a devil for you. So, y'all, I mean, a, oh, this is, this is unbelievable. I'm going to go on. Okay. The AP found that U.S. prison labor is in the supply chains, goods being shipped all over the world, and multinational companies, including countries that have been slapped with import bans by Washington in recent years. For instance, the U.S. has blocked shipments of cotton coming from China. A top manufacturer, popular clothing brand, because it was produced by forced labor or prison labor. You see the hypocrisy from this country. Oh, man. But crops harvested by U.S. prisoners have entered the supply chains of companies that export to China. I'm not surprised. I mean, you got the biggest hypocrites on this land. So... While prison labor seeps into the supply chains of companies through third-party uh, suppliers without them knowing, others buy direct. Mammoth commodity traders. So they, they are feeding the globe like Cargill, Bunge, Louis Dreyfus, Archer Daniel, Midland and Consolidated Grain and Barge, which together post annual revenue of $400 billion. And they wouldn't have none of that, y'all, if it wasn't for the prison labor, aka black men in this country. have in recent years scooped up millions of dollars worth of soy, corn, and wheat straight from prisons, which compete with local farmers. The AP reached out for comment from these companies. And, you know, of course, they didn't respond, you know, the nature of the story. So they didn't respond. I guess they didn't. Cargill acknowledged buying goods from prison farms in Tennessee, Arkansas, and Ohio, saying they constituted only a small fraction of the company's overwhelming volume. Yeah, I don't believe that for one second. McDonald's said, now McDonald's have said this before, y'all, in the past. McDonald's said that it would investigate link to such labor McDonald's ain't going to do nothing but keep using it. 
Archer Daniel Midland and General Mills, which produces gold metal flour, pointed to their policies in place restricting suppliers from using forced labor. And, you know, they will all say this because they know how it looks bad, but they're going to continue to use prison labor, y'all. Make no mistake about it. Whole Foods says it does not allow the use of prison labor in products sold at its stores. Yes, they do. Yes, they do, y'all. They're going to always come out publicly when they're embarrassed by this stuff and say these things, but they're going to continue to use prison labor. Make no mistake about it. Bunge said it sold all of its facilities that sourcing from correction departments in 2021, and it's no longer part of Bunge's footprint. Dairy Farmers of America, a cooperative bill that itself as the top supplier of raw milk worldwide, said while it has been buying from correctional facilities, it now only has one member dairy at a prison with most of that milk used inside. Again, I don't believe them. I don't believe them at all. I believe all these corporations are a bunch of liars. So to understand the business of prison labor, a.k.a. slavery, and the complex movement of agriculture good, the AP collected information from all 50 states through public records, requests, and inquiries to corrections departments. Reporters also crisscrossed the country following trucks transporting crops and livestock linked to prison work, entailed transport vans from prisons and work release sites headed to places such as poultry plants, egg farms, and fast food restaurants. Yes, so you could walk in a fast food restaurant, stand there, give your order, and that's an inmate taking your order. A lack of transparency, at times baffling, Losses, exposure, and audits added to the challenges of fully tracking the money. So big ticketed items such as raw crops and livestock are sold on the open market with profits fed back into agriculture programs. And they said there's dozens of state prison farms, including Texas, Virginia, Kentucky, and Montana have sold $60 million worth of cattle in 2018. Uh-huh. Because they often are sold at auction houses and to uh, stockyards it's almost impossible to determine where the beef eventually ends up. Yeah, they don't want you to follow the trail. They don't want you to follow the trail. In Louisiana, AP reporter watched as three long trailers loaded with more than 80 cattle left the state uh, penitentiary. So these cows were raised by the inmates raised by the inmates. They are shoved through a gate into a viewing pen. The auctioneer jokingly warns buyers to watch out. The cows said it just broken out of prison. Yeah, because they know where they came from. And they know those inmates raised these cattle, you know, probably for free. Within minutes, the Angola lot was snapped up by a local livestock dealer who then sold the cattle to the Texas beef processor that also buys cows directly from prisons in the state. The meat from the slaughterhouse winds up in the supply chains as some of the biggest fast food chains, supermarkets, and meat exporters 
including Burger King, Sam's Club, and Tyson Food. It's a real slap in the face to hear where all of those cattle are going. Jermaine Hudson, who served 22 years at Angola for a robbery conviction before he was exonerated. So he was in there also for 22 years for a crime he did not commit. That's why I'm telling y'all, they got black men by the thousands in these prisons that never committed a crime. And I'm willing to believe, and I know one day the, the real story will come out. I'm willing to believe the vast majority are in there and they did not commit any crime. I believe that is the majority of the prisoners in America. I really truly believe that. And the ones that committed crimes, it's really not that many of them in comparison. There's definitely more innocent than the ones that committed crimes. So here you got another one in this same story in there for decades and got exonerated because they never committed a crime, but they had to still do the, uh, the slave labor. They still had to do it. He said, you know, what's even worse is the food served in prison tastes like slop. Yeah, the best food is leaving the prison. And he said, those were some of the most disrespectful meals, Hudson said, that I ever had in my lifetime. So, ladies and gentlemen, Angola sure was not the only one. Alcatraz of the South, Angola, tucked away alligator swamps surrounding it. Spans 18,000 acres, an area bigger than the island of Manhattan, has its own zip code. The former 19th century antebellum plantation once was owned by one of the largest slave traders in the U.S. Today houses 3,800 men behind its razor wire walls about 65% of them black and probably 30% of them never committed a crime. Within days of arrival, they're typically headed to the fields, sometimes using hoes and shovels or picking crops by hand. They initially work for free but then can earn two cents and 40 cents an hour. So they earn between two cents and 40 cents an hour, y'all. And these people think they should be in power forever. They really think they should be. And we know Gentiles, that's why you got a time limit to your rulership and you really should. You know why? Because y'all were never supposed to rule at all on this earth. You never were. So that's why you got a time limit. You got an expiration date. And as far as I'm concerned, it ain't going to get here fast enough. Calvin Thomas, who spent 17 years in Angola, said anyone who refused to work didn't produce enough or just stepped outside of the long straight rows, knew there would be consequences. If he shoots the gun in the air because you done passed the line, that means you're going to get locked up. You're going to have to pay for that bullet that he shot. Calvin said some days were so blistering hot even the guard horses would collapse. Oh, boy. Yeah, and he says it's just slavery. It really is. It really is. 
so y'all, I mean, these prisoners have also filed class action lawsuits, not only in Louisiana, but also in Alabama. They have filed these lawsuits like within the past four months that they have been forced to provide cheap or free labor, labor to those states and outside companies, a practice that they describe as slavery. And that is slavery. Everything they're doing in these prisons, that is slavery. That's not no rehabilitation. And these folks know it's not rehabilitation. They know it's not. Oh boy. Prisoners have been made to work before emancipation when slaves were at time imprisoned and then leased out by local authorities. But after the Civil War, the 13th Amendment exception clause that allowed for prison labor provided legal cover to round up thousands of mostly black young men. Many were jailed for petty offenses, loitering, vagrancy. Yeah, anything to get you in there just like they do today. The new loitering and vagrancy is marijuana today that they use. Then they're leased out by states to plantations like Angola and some of the biggest companies, including coal mines and railroads. They were routinely whipped for not meeting quotas while doing brutal and often deadly work, just like they're punished today in the prisons. Reparations, anyone? Reparations? The convict lease period, which officially ended in 1928, that's not true. It's still going on now. That's why these prisoners, the inmates that are in there now, are telling you they get leased out. So they're, 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 even when they tell you something ends, they're still lying to you. The inmates today say they are still leased out. So there's no rehabilitating in America. It's just slavery only. I mean, give me a break. And y'all need to stop using that rehabilitating. You're not rehabilitating any darn body in there. And you know it. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a disgrace. Another black eye on America. Another, uh, uh, you know, further proof of why America is under judgment the way that you are. And you deserve all of that judgment, by the way. And, and you deserve to have a time limit to your rulership. All of those things are well deserved. And y'all... You're going to have to tell me what you think. I mean, this article is quite lengthy, but you get the gist of what I have gone over. This is truly a disgrace. And y'all don't ever, ever stop pushing for reparations in America. Don't let up for even one second. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.